Hey everybody, this is Thea. This is Daniel. And we're standing on the corner of here and now. Join us as we have conversations about all things recovery. And hang on to your seat. We're in for a ride. microwaving <clears throat> and we're rolling we're rolling okay that's okay can we get a red light like just to go in here like do you not, want a mood setter not not a no not like the <laughs> don't you don't have to turn on your red light not like the <laughs> prostitution of sting songs but uh Roxanne. <laughs> But of uh, like, isn't that what they do? In recording is on. Recording light, yeah. yep. The recording light. Well, if anyone's wondering, that was the uh, awesome Kenny Cordray, Rojo Bombastico, off of his uh, Love Street album. No wait. It takes. It everything. takes everything album. Sorry about that. Kenny Cordray and Love Street takes everything album. But Kenny's part of this history. That's why we're doing doing this. So welcome to show number one. We're really, really stoked. Uh, this is going to be a little short little intro. We'll be here maybe 10 or 15 minutes, or we'll see what happens. We'll see if it goes a little longer. But we wanted to jump on and just uh, talk a little bit about why we're doing this and where it's coming from um, and all that kind of stuff. So why are we doing this? It's a good question. Um, one of my thoughts, I was trying to explain this to my mom Um and, and I said, there's a lot of really good recovery and there's a lot of people that are really seeking in this area. And there's that, that vacuum of unapproachability. A lot of these people that have really been walking this path a long time and, uh, and trying to go to the next level and dig deeper in recovery, um, you know, that a lot of their stories are, are pretty obscure or people don't necessarily have that. And uh, so being that that's something akin to our heart, something we feel very mm -hmm. passionately about is just continuing to grow, just opening that up and somehow like broadening that conversation and broadening that to all the people that we get to share this thing with. Yeah, and we find ourselves having these uh, really great conversations in the car when we're hanging out or at lunch when we're hanging out. Um, and it's in those little moments. And we've often said, man, we should have a recorder going right now. This is like really good stuff. So we're hoping to bring the car rides and the lunches to the kitchen table in my kitchen. That's where that's where we are, everybody, is we're in my kitchen in Seabrook, Tech, Texas, if you're out there somewhere else in the world listening. Um, and that's kind of exciting to me. This is something I've been wanting to do for a really long time. It's kind of weird, but I've just like wanted a podcast. <laughs> I've got like a hundred ideas. But over the last couple of years, after doing groups in the treatment centers and being gone back and getting in touch with the newcomers and being around people that are new to re recovery and trying to get clean and sober and bringing these little tidbits out, um, but having a way to get that information out. Because there's so many people out there that are really successful in recovery and it's like, I think people need to hear that. Like you're saying, these stories of these people, they come in with crazy stories, but they have great stories of their clean time and what they're doing in their lives and the people they're helping and the successes they've had and the failures too, obviously, because it all goes hand in hand. But to be able to have those conversations in a venue um, where we're not worried about what we share so much and we can bring in outside influences a little bit and some of that kind of stuff. Because a, a lot of it goes for me along with my personal growth and, you know, all the other things I do and, you know, the books I read and the Tony Robbins and all the stuff. It Everyone's saying the same thing, just in, a, in different words and in a different way. So if we can bring that here to where we can kind of all absorb it and stuff, stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, sharing things. I mean, there's, there's so much 
capacity to be able to do that today. And, and so you were talking about the groups and mm-hmm. things. And there's there's every now and again in a meeting when you hear someone share or in, in doing these groups or talking to people or having the conversations at lunch, all these things just – that there's a magic that'll happen sometimes where some things start getting discussed and the energy builds on each other. One person will say, oh, and it sparks this. And it builds into something that that's of value, I think. And so to try to organically capture that best you can with Mm -hmm. microphones and headsets, it would be really cool um, to, to broaden that out. Exactly. And my, one of my original ideas was to try and interview, if you will, or have conversations with people who are successful. And I'm doing the funny air, air quotes right now um, in their re- recovery, whether it's they've had big business successes or whether they've had some sort of spiritual successes or they have, um, you know, really great marriages and kids or any combination thereof, um, they've managed to st- rack a whole bunch of days together we were laughing earlier about how many days clean we have and all that kind of stuff so you know clean time does count and and um where does the rubber meet the road with this stuff and you know you were telling me earlier about someone you were working with and the type of four step they're doing and how all this stuff evolves and changes and people don't realize that i think a lot of time and um part of my big dream for this thing even too is like what if people were listening that aren't in the program Mm -hmm. like what if a a parent heard this or a spouse or just somebody driving in their car one day came across this like we could really help a lot of people um that maybe didn't even realize that they could gain anything from from anything that you know i should say we have to share for lack of a better way to Mm -hmm. put it i think that could be like really, really huge. I think it could. You 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 had said it one time, in a in a talk that you were doing over at the, the treatment center, and said that, and this is something that I was taught that it's in everything. everything. And that recovery is not really about. It's about how we live. It's about mm-hmm. how we interact with the world and this little plane of existence we're on, and it's in everything. And you start seeing it in everything. Um, and so I think it, this type of all these type of topics and things that we want to talk about would be good for anybody. This is just human stuff at some point because um, we're all in recovery from something. Um, it's just some of us, maybe it's a bit more apparent. Um, I know with me <laughs> in the state of Texas and law, it's very apparent sure. that there was an issue. I think another thing uh, about this is that it's, this is our lives. This is what we're passionate about. This is mm-hmm. what we talk about. You know, when I go home with uh, with Haley in the evenings, that's what we talk about. That's what we get excited about. We're talking about recovery. We're talking about spirituality. We're talking about different people and, well, what's going on with them and how can I take something away from that? Whether it's something I can avoid, whether it's something that I can add to my life. And with you and I, that's that's been the basis of our relationship is just that passion for recovery and growth. And that's that's why we're friends. Is that why we're friends? I think so. I'm not sure why, but we'll that's a good theory. We might have to do a whole show on that. <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yeah, and I think the recovery part, you know, it's funny because I think we just happen to be two people in recovery. Right? So that's our jumping off point. Yeah. You know, we're going to, this thing will start with, you know, 12 step back background things that we heard in a meeting, something we saw, what, what, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I really think it's a jumping off point. Like we don't have a, a path for this thing. It's always on the path. We're all always mm-hmm. on the path. Like we always say, well, that person's on the path. I'm on the path. The show's on the path and it's going to kind of go wherever it goes, you know, and you know me, I like a good rabbit hole. I love a good tangent. Mm-hmm. So you know, who knows, who knows what we may end up talking about? Who knows where this thing may end up going? Um, but just having that openness to let our higher powers take it wherever yes. it's going to go. Um, and maybe always coming back to the basics too, you know, and like, how do we work the basics into all of this? Um, and just being able to go out from there. Yeah. That, that was another thing that I was talking about with my mom. She had the question. She said, well, I'm sure that Thea has all this lined out. I'm sure that she's got it. You know, this is what the first episode will be. And this is what the second episode will be. And I was like, no, 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 that that's absolutely not what's going to happen because that takes away from it. It, it needs to be 
a path. It needs, I like, I like that you said that, that this is a path, everything's a path and that it can flow and be organic and talk about anything and it just be really open because that's when the magic of life happens. I think when yes. we try not to control it, not to say, Oh, well, if it's rigid and scripted, then I don't think it rings true. Kind of like in the meetings when, when you hear somebody or anybody, when they're sharing something and it's coming from their intellect, I don't get so much out of it, but when it's coming from the heart, even if it's not well articulated, um, even if it's not really that great, but if it's from the heart and real, I feel it. Look at the whole room feels it, right? Absolutely. We've both seen that when somebody yep. opens up and starts sharing, even if at first it doesn't make sense or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But then all of a sudden it's just like, there's like a, a clunk almost. There's like a feeling where it, it, it gears down and you're like, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. That person had to go through all that other crap before they got to the real stuff. It took them a few sentences or five minutes or whatever, but then boom, there it right. is. Like dropping the, the, the needle on the record and yes. then it goes. And then it goes. And I think, yeah, I think that's what make it really, really cool in that fact that we will hopefully be able to do that. Hopefully. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal. Um, so this, uh, podcast is going to take different shapes. Like we were just saying, so it'll be Daniel and I having conversations. We may, we'll have guests on at some point where maybe Daniel's talking to someone or I'm talking to someone. We're going to try and find some people in the area that we feel like will fit the mold and be willing to jump in the hot seat with us and have some of these conversations. Um, maybe one of us just blathering on at one point, monologue -y, but who knows I don't think either one of us are really down for that, but you know, you never know. You never, never know. know. Sometimes when you're lit up yeah. with some of this, you're lit up with it. Right. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're not. Um, and then we have a, um, we have a wish list of people yes. that we want to try and, uh, get on the show at some point when, you know, see if we can get somebody on. He is a fan girl. I am. A, I, oh God. <laughs> Damn you, Daniel. <laughs> yes. I'm a little bit of a fan girl sometimes. <laughs> And I have my people that I want to talk talk to. Um, so, yeah, that would be, like, really exciting. If we could put some good vibes out into the universe and and um, bring some of these people in somehow, some way, or we go we go to them, whatever is going to work, work out. Um, we've also got some crazy ideas of maybe trying to do some of these from a treatment center, like going in and doing some kind of live Q&A or ask it basket type style mm -hmm. thing where we could just – give out our opinions because that's all they are we don't have the answers to anything but yeah, experience experience strength and hope that's all we got yeah i love how it says in one book that um there's there's no monopoly on recovery it's so mm -hmm. broad and that's kind of what we're talking about in this one that uh there's you know kind of like for the personal recovery it's not my way is not the best way it ain't the only way all i know is that this is the way that's worked for me i agree i heard someone say that once on a podcast actually Nice. Yeah, he'd been clean for a long time, and he said one day he was sitting in a meeting, and he, one somebody else in the meeting said, hey, 12 steps are what work for me, but they're not what works for everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's a zillion ways to skin a cat. In our case, there's a lot of ways to get to Galveston. So, you know, you don't have to go down 45. You don't have to go over the cause causeway. Not everyone has to go that way. So when we think of it in that manner, it kind of changes it up a little bit, and we can do things in our own way to some extent. Yeah, and, and so having this conversation open um, and and being able to explore all this, I think is really exciting because the, it wasn't but a couple of years ago or, or something like that that um, when we were first kind of becoming friends and Thea had brought up the concept of, of recovery being this really big thing and I was really, really narrow-minded at the time and, and I knew that this one part of 12-step was working for me mm -hmm. and I was very legalistic about it. I was very Nazi-ish about it and it was it was almost like just bringing it up, I was like, blasphemy <laughs> to you. How dare you speak in any other way but right. what works right here and and then it opened my mind. Mm -hmm. It cracked it open and, and thank God it did. Um, and so that, that's might be another, you know, kind of a goal in this is to broadening it out. There's a lot of people with some good things, but it can get really closed. It can get incestuous. It can get in bubbles. And, and that's always a sick place for me so far. I've got a feeling, a sneaky suspicion. That's a sick place for anybody. I think so. I've been there. I've been the Nazi in the room. 
you know, this is the way we do it, and nobody needs anything else, and you don't need this, and you don't, you don't need to read those other books, and you, you know, we do it this way. Mm-hmm. This is the way we've always done it. If you go to a business meeting, this is the way we've always done That's it. It's a bad sign. Bad sign. And any business, I don't yep. care if it's a 12-step, you know, group conscience, or if you're sitting in a boardroom for a multi-billion dollar company, as soon as somebody says, this is how we've always done it, you're headed for the ditch. Like that's not a that's not a good a good place to be. So I think, uh, and I've been there, and I've been all over the map. I've walked away from the rooms. I've gone back to the rooms. I've had sponsors. I haven't had sponsors. I've had sponsees. I haven't had spon. Like I've been all over the map. Um, but the fact that we can be open minded and we can try and move through this thing um, is a huge thing because we're all doing it. Like you said earlier, we're all just human. And that's really, we have human problems anymore. We don't necessarily have, um, you know, I don't have a using problem anymore for the most part, unless I decide to start using again. <laughs> well, and, and that's where it gets, that's where the road really opens up with this because I might not be, and that, that's kind of the beauty of the way that we think about things, right? I might not be using a mind altering substance or something dangerous, but this thing comes out in every which way. Mm-hmm. Um, we were doing step work this morning and uh, the guy and, and I was saying, it's not going to come at you straight ahead anymore. For me, uh, heroin and, and, and cocaine and all the illicit substances and alcohol and all these things, that was my disease coming at me straight forward. And when that stopped working, it's, oh, we can't get him anymore straight forward that way. Well, we'll try it a little bit different. And so now it comes at me in a lot of really cunning in baffling and insidious ways. Right. It'll come at my at my six, and which is, again, why it's so important to have good people around me, because right. I can't see it. Right. That's huge. We tell people that all the time. The mm-hmm. five people you spend the most mm-hmm. time with. You can parade your five best friends in front of me. I don't even have to see you. That's true. You put those five people in front of me, and I can tell you everything about you. I can tell you how much you weigh, how much money you make, where you live, what type of clothes you wear. The whole nine, right? Same with me. You see the five people I spend the most time with, you're going to be like, oh, I know her pretty well already. So your net worth is your network, Mm. as they say in business book, (laughs) you know, stuff. But it's the same thing here. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same thing. Who are you hanging out with? What are you doing? So all that stuff will come into play with what we're doing, uh, with what what we're doing here. Cool. Anything else that we want to uh, cover in this first little tidbit. I'll just say that the, the other thing that I think is exciting is to be real inclusive and not exclusive. And so this yeah. is just one of those things at a kitchen table with some pretty cool equipment, but I wouldn't say like terribly sophisticated. <laughs> no. It looks, it is impressive. I feel really professional with, you know, a microphone and the filter thing on it and yeah. some headsets, but, but... <laughs> To, to get Do it out. Do we really need the headsets? I think we just put them on to look I cool. think it's important. Okay. If, <laughs> I think it's very important. <laughs> uh, they go on and, and, uh, and all of a sudden you feel like you're doing something special. But, um, yeah, this being real inclusive and broad to all kinds of things. Just very openness with this yeah. as far as people, perspectives, everything. All I think it. that's going to be really cool. So that means that you're included in this. Everyone's included. Exactly. Um, and we have a website. I'm going to throw that out there now. It's cornerofhereandnow.com. It's all spelled out, corner of here and now. Um, there's a little blog there. We probably won't be writing on the blog a whole lot unless one of us wants to or whatever. I don't know. I'm not a big writer. I think this is going to be a better way for me to get info out to people. Mm-hmm. It's part of the reason why I wanted to do it is I'm not a, I'm not a huge writer, but I think this is pretty awesome. Um, but there's a, a blog, there's a little blog there and, uh, we'll be posting the podcast there. We'll also be on iTunes. I know I figured that craziness out. Um, and we have a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So there's a YouTube channel. We'll be posting the audio on the YouTube channel as well. So, which is also corner of here and now. So it's all, It's all under that same name, so you guys can find us out there, and hopefully, you know, seven listeners can't be wrong. I'm pretty sure we can get seven, maybe. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, you guys can find us out there and keep up with us. Uh, And we have an email, cornerofhereandnow at gmail, cornerofhereandnow at gmail. So if you want to reach out, ask questions, ask us to cover a topic, um, if you got a guest you want to get on, 
um, something, you know, you can reach out to us. Now, we won't be checking that email like every day, so don't get mad if we don't email you back right away, but um, it is out there and you can find us. For anything but a disagreement. Yes. I'm kidding. Well, yes and no. Don't be a troll. Right. <laughs> Let's have a spirited yet spiritual conversation, as a friend of mine used to say. Uh, let's try and uh, keep our big kid pants on and, and have a healthy conversation. And with that, I want to say one more thing. And, um, you know, none of this would probably be possible if I hadn't had my friend Kenny Cord Cordray, right? My friend Kenny C., who's uh, not with us anymore, but uh, he got me into doing groups at the treatment center. And I balked, and he said, no, Thea, you need a group. You need, you need to go get a group, Thea. So if it wasn't for Kenny and me reaching out to Daniel and getting a couple groups in the area and having some of these ideas and starting to have some of these conversations, um, there's other people too, but I'll, I'll leave them for later. But um, I just wanted to send out a big shout-out to Kenny. Big thank you to Kenny. And hopefully he's looking down at us uh, just laughing his ass off right now. I and, would think. Yeah, so that, that makes me real happy. So anyway, is that it? I'm going to wrap it. it up. Love you guys. Thanks, y'all.